we're going to talk about linear independence and its connection with the notion of rank of a matrix. So in particular, we'll talk about a matrix A equal V1, V2 is in the second column, all the way up to Vm in the final column, the nth column. And this will be an n times n matrix. So each of these vectors is in Rn. And I draw this sign means n. You just translate that into the word n. R n. Well, the definition of linear independence is pretty simple. A set v1, v2, all the way up to vm in Rn is linearly independent, linearly independent, if the only solution to C1 V1 plus C2 V2 plus continue the sum all the way to Cm Vm equals zero is the trivial solution where ci is equal to zero for all i. So that that's not actually clear what this is just by saying linearly independent. It's actually easier to understand the notion of linear dependence. So the same collection, or the same set, of VIs is linearly dependent if we'll call this guy star there is a non-zero solution to star. So one way to think about this, well, let's say that C1 is non-zero, and we have this sum here. Well, if C1 is non-zero, then we can subtract this from this side, and then divide both sides by negative C1, and we'll get V1 is equal to minus C2 over C1, V2, minus C3 over C1, V3, minus Cm over C1, Vm. That should be an M. So that means that V can be expressed as a linear combination so any anytime I write something like this, I'll call it a linear combination. A linear combination of the other Vs. Which in some sense means that our system of Vs is redundant. That is, I could remove V1 and I still have the expressive capacity with the remaining vectors. And that's that's what linearly linear dependence and linear independence really boils down to. And we have the following theorem that really tells us how to connect linear independence to the rank of a matrix. Well, it, it'll, it'll start to show us this. So first we want to characterize this in terms of our matrix A. Remember our matrix A up here? So this theorem is... V1 
V1, V2, all the way up to Vm are linearly independent. And I'll start writing Li because it, this is a long thing to write out. And you can use that too. If and only if. AC equals zero has only one solution. And of course this has a solution, the zero vector always works. And remember A is just the matrix obtained by joining all the VIs as columns in a matrix. And the proof of this is not so bad. How about the if direction? So if AC is equal to zero, has only one solution. That is, of course, C is equal to zero, right? And we can't have another solution. Then, AC is equal to if we just do this multiplication, we get this linear combination that we saw before. Only has ci equals zero for all i. as a solution. And this is the definition of linear independence. So we're done. How about only if? Well here we just show the contrapositive of only if, right? So the only if would be if this is linearly independent then this has only one solution. But now let's take the contrapositive and let's suppose that and the contrapositive will say that AC equals zero. So we assume that has more than one solution. Then let C be a non-zero solution. Right, there's only one zero solution, and obviously that's a solution, but if it has more than one solution, then this has to be a non-zero solution. Then this quantity here is equal to zero, but the CI, one of the CIs has to be non-zero. So V1 up to Vm are linearly dependent, and we're done. So this is a nice simple characterization in terms of things we know about matrices. And this, this theorem immediately allows us to say something in terms of the rank of this matrix. So basically we can characterize linearly, linear independence in terms of the rank of this matrix A. Which is really kind of nice because that means that we can compute things easily. So here's the theorem. V1 up to Vm are linearly independent if and only if the rank of that A matrix is equal to M. Right? Well, the, the rank has to be less than or equal to M, so this means essentially that this has the largest rank it could possibly have. So the proof of this is going to follow by a series of equivalences. Well, by the last theorem, the VIs are linearly independent if and only if AC equals zero has
only one solution. Or at most one solution. Those are equivalent. Well, this is true if and only if AC is equal to B has one solution. for any B. And so the proof of that claim, well, we have to prove the if direction. So if. If AC equal B has at most, so as, has at most, one solution, so I'm proving this if and only if, has at most one solution, then of course I can just set B is equal to zero and I have AC is equal to zero has at most one solution. And therefore this has exactly one solution. How about the only if? Well, suppose AC is equal to zero, has only one solution, and also that AC1 equals AC2 is equal to B. Then we subtract. We have AC1 minus AC2 is then equal to B minus B. I keep losing arrows, but you get the idea. And b minus b is just a zero. Now using the distributive property, we have a times c1 minus c2 is equal to zero. But we've assumed, right, because we're doing the only if, we've assumed that ac is equal to zero has only one solution, and that's the zero solution. Therefore, we have to conclude that c1 minus c2 is equal to zero, and if we bring negative c1, I mean negative c2 over to the other side, then we have c1 is equal to c2. And that proves this statement. So now we step, step back out, and by fact 7.9 in your book, ac equals b has at most one solution for any B if and only if the rank of A is equal to the columns of A, but the number of columns of A is M. So I've shown that if we trace back through all the equivalences, I've shown that this equivalence holds.